Welcome to Thrilling Grilling Live here with Hormel Foods. Uh, my name is Chris. I am from the Consumer Engagement Department at Hormel Foods where we're answering consumer questions every day. And with me today, we have product development chef Chris Candulo. Hi. Chef Chris, Hi. thanks so much for coming oh, out today. Absolutely. So uh, we wanted to start off with just some grilling basics. Um, yeah. I, you know, everybody's got a lot of great questions this time of year on the, right. you know, want to do it right and want to do it, you know, safe for everybody. So, sure. Um, one of the first things that um, we get a lot of questions about is, you know, safe temperatures. So, how do you know sure. when, you know, when it's safe to go ahead and, you know, put meat out on the grill? Sure. Well, a lot of times you're going to want to preheat your grill to make sure it's it's ready to go, um, which we have done. You also, when you're working with the gas or a charcoal grill. You want to be able to create a cold spot or a not so hot spot so you can have direct and indirect um, cooking. So then that way you can do your proper sear and then you can move your meat over to the side to make sure that you finish cooking. So a lot of times what you're doing when you're cooking meats, you want to make sure you hit the proper internal temperature. So for pork, we're going to hit 155 and for the turkey burgers, we're going to hit 165. Okay, excellent. So uh, Chris, I know we're working with the yeah. gas grill here today. I've got a charcoal grill at home. Um, what's the best way for me to know, you know, since I don't have a gauge on mine, how, sure. how would I test to know? Right. Well, a lot of times the grills will come with some type of thermometer on top, which then tells you what the overall oven temp or the grill temp is. Sure. And, but typically running between three and 400 degrees for those grills. Um, if you do not have a um, lid that has a thermometer on it, mm -hmm. then a lot of times you can get a little probe that you can stick inside and it'll give you a general sense of how hot your grill is. Okay, great, great. Well, and listen, folks, uh, as you have questions, please feel free to write them in and we'll be, we'll be happy to answer them for you live. Sure. Um, let's see. So uh, we've got some frequently asked questions that were all queued up while people come up with their own ideas for what they want to ask Chef Chris today. Um, let's see, uh, so when you're, like, let's say for me, when I'm grilling with charcoal, um, you know, how will I know, like, I'll be honest, I don't have a meat probe, um, sure. or, you know, a, a temperature, temperature probe. probe. Yeah, so what's a good, like, uh, rough guess? So what will happen is you'll start your coals, mm -hmm. and then you'll start them in a pile or in a little starter, and then once those coals get nice and gray, or kind of ashy, that's where you can then start spreading them out. And then when you spread them out, you want to make sure you kind of create a little cooler spot. So you nice and thick in some area, and you can have just a few coals in another area. That way you can take advantage of being able to manage the heat of your grill. Okay. So you can sear on one side, and then you can move, move it over and slow it down, and then bring it to the proper internal temperature. Okay. So yeah, I was wondering, you know, what, um, what kind of things would you want to start out on that hot, direct sure. heat? Well, almost, almost everything, actually. It depends if you want to develop that color or a sear color. Okay. So for chops or steaks or tenderloins, uh, kebabs, all that, you can put over direct sear, get a nice color on it and a nice flavor on it, and then you can move it over to the side to where it's not so hot, and then you just bring that internal temperature up. Oh, excellent. Let's see. Well, already we've got some questions coming in. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah, so let's tackle excellent. one. Uh, Rick asks, uh, Chef Chris, what is your favorite thing to grill? <sighs> I like to grill pork chops, and I like to grill hamburgers. Excellent. I, I just enjoy those. Nothing better than a nice hamburger that's grilling on the, on the grill. You've got the nice fire touching that fat and the meat. Mm. There's nothing that's better than that. <laughs> excellent. Well, thanks, Rick, for our first question. Yes. I'm going to move this over. Go ahead. All right. Yes. I have to multitask. Right. So um, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, smoke, you know, adding smoke flavor is a lot oh, of sure. the fun of grilling. Um, so I, it looks like you've got some, some ways to add some yes. smoke flavoring here while we're grilling. Yes. What I have is in charcoal grill, it's nice and easy. You just throw the chips at the bottom of your charcoal and then it'll get a nice smoke. Well, for gas grill, you've got two choices. You can buy those little metal fire boxes that uh, you throw your chips in, and then you'd have to put it in between the grill grates and the burners. Or you just fold up some tin foil, throw the chips in there. I just poked a couple holes in it, okay. and then you throw it in there. And as you cook, it's already starting to work now, is that the smoke just starts giving you this nice wood fire essence as you're grilling. Oh, excellent. All right. Um, 
Well, it looks like we've got uh, a couple different uh, Genio turkey burgers that are that are going on the grill already. Yes. Um, so we've got both some uh, fresh meat and some frozen burgers. And so, um, yeah, I'd like to so, find out more about sure. yeah, getting getting started with those. So what we did is we've, uh, like you said, we've got ground turkey. Mm -hmm. And we just made some patties out of it. Okay. Um, I like to season my meat a little bit, so I just simply added some salt and some pepper, onion, garlic. That's it. Okay. And mix it up, and then I make a meatball out of it, and I just smush it. All right. <laughs> nice and easy. And then, and then I just put a thumbprint in the middle of that, and that kind of helps keep it from cooking as a meatball. Sure. So you're not having a meatball <laughs> burger; it's actually a patty. Yep. Um, and then we have uh, frozen season patties that we have here. That uh, one is cheddar bacon, and one has got some seasoning in it. You just put it straight on the grill from frozen. Oh, that's nice and it's easy. It's nice and easy. <laughs> it keeps its shape, and it cooks just as fast as the other hamburgers do. Right. Yeah. That's what. Yep. We have a lot of consumers calling in to double check. Like, sure. Hey, they they they're in the frozen section. Right. You know, do I need to thaw them out? But but yeah, just putting them right on frozen. Right. Nice right. and easy. Well, excellent. Um, one of the biggest things that we, you know, we like to educate consumers on is, you know, safe grilling, yeah. safe, uh, making sure things are getting up to that safe internal temperature. You mentioned sure. before for poultry, uh, 165 degrees. Yes. So excellent. Um, what what are the best ways to test to make sure, you know, yeah. like like a burger, something that's maybe a little thinner sure. than a bigger cut of well, meat? Well, the best way to test is by using a thermometer. Okay. So there are all different kinds of thermometers out there, and they all work. So this one just happens to be a digital thermometer that you're just going to stick the probe in the center of this thickest spot of whatever meat you're cooking. Okay. And then as long as you know what temperature you're trying to hit, nice. that's it. There is no guesswork. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I was actually grilling turkey burgers this weekend, so would you mind demonstrating? Sure. We'll, we'll see if I did it right. Sure. All you do is you simply just stick it in there. Okay. And we are looking really well. Look at that, 166 oh, on, that on that turkey That's beautiful. burger. beautiful. And that one's a little bit above that. So as far as this is concerned, these turkey burgers are ready to go. Excellent. So I'm just going to place these All right. right here. And again, I just lightly seasoned the meat on, on, and mixed it together. I didn't season the outside. Okay. So the idea behind this is, is that you know, a lot of times when chefs will cook steaks and hamburgers, they'll kind of touch it and they'll see how firm it is. Sure. Really, the best we best thing to do is to just use the temperature probe on sure, that. Sure. Takes yeah. the guesswork out of everything, yep. especially if you're not really familiar with how tender or how tough the meat's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard with yeah different cuts. You know, people recommend a certain yeah how like comparing it to your hand and right. That, personally, that's always made me a little nervous. A little nervous. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't necessarily have the biggest, strongest hands, so. <laughs> um, all right, well, we've got another question coming in sure. um, from Mary. So what is the best way to keep my grill clean so food doesn't mm. stick? <laughs> well, you can see this right now. The best thing to do is sometimes you are gonna get some sticking. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is we try to spray the grill before I turn it on. Okay. So that works if you have one setting, if you're going to spray it, you're going to turn it on, then you're going to put the pork or the beef or the chicken, whatever you're cooking on there, and then you cook it and you're done. But if you're putting things on here over and over again, mm -hmm. let's say you have a large party to do, sure. the best thing to do is really just brush it. Okay. Because if you do that, if you keep your, your grill grates clean, oh, sure. it also reduces the sticking. So then that way, now I can use this spot for something else as we move forward. Great. Instead of trying to take a can of span, uh, pan release and spray it on there, you know, you got the blowtorch happening. Yeah. You might lose a little bit of eyebrows, a little bit of eyelashes, so it's best just to actually scrape it and keep it that, clean. That sounds much safer. <laughs> much safer. <laughs> Excellent. Let's see. All right, we got another question here. Um, Let's see, so how often should someone turn a burger? Sure, I've seen lots lots out there and I've heard lots of ways to do this. Um, me personally, mm -hmm. if I am cooking different things at different times and trying to like pork loins and kebabs and turkey burgers and this and that, sure. I need to be able to move my product around the grill 
as I need to manage the heat coming off of it. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll throw the turkey burgers on and just let it sit for a couple minutes to get a good sear on the bottom. Okay. And then I'll flip it. Once you let it sear, it'll release without having any issues. Mm -hmm. Then you flip it, you get another sear on that. It's not done yet, but now I can move that around the grill as I need to shuffle and put more products okay. on there. So what I did here is I started on super high heat, got the nice sear done, mm -hmm. and then I moved it over to a cold heat because I created a cold spot on this grill. Okay. And then I was able to bring this up slowly. But then as, because I needed this hot spot for more items. Mm -hmm. So then I keep moving it back and forth. Sure. So as long as you're not smashing in a burger or a turkey burger, you're not smashing, you're fine. So that's, that's what I do is I think that way I can manage the hot spot of the grill. Okay. Yeah. And that helps kind of keep, kind of keep the juiciness locked yes. in and. That's right. Awesome. Great. So let's see, we've got some other items here. Yeah. A couple. That, uh, we, we started cooking cause they take a little bit longer to cook, probably, probably about 20 minutes for these pork loin fillets. Mm -hmm. So again, what I did is I used a nice hot spot. I got a nice sear on it. Now I just move it over to a cold spot and finish cooking it. That way I don't put a ton of temperature in there and it's going to get really dry. I don't want that. Sure. I want to slow it down, let it come up to temperature nice and easy. Nice. And then it's ready to go, which right. is 155. So I believe that we are not quite there yet, but okay. let's yeah, find let's... out. Let's find out where we're at. So I'm at 100 degrees. Okay. So I've got some time. That Excellent. one's a little bit more. So 128. All right. So Easier. all I'm going to do is just move it over to my cold spot and just let it come up nice and easy. Excellent. Now I've got a hot spot here that I can use for any other items like pizzas or something like that. Perfect. That's what I mean about being able to manage the hot spot of my grill. Thanks. I'm gonna clean this up. All right. We've got a couple more questions coming in. Sure. Let's see. Got a nice one here. All right, so sure. Becca has a question. She first of all said, hey, thanks for representing the thermometer. Oh, so sure. that's some really important stuff to see. Um, so she talked about uh, saving bacon fat and mushrooms oh. to incorporate into oh, her oh, turkey oh. for some like extra hardiness. That sounds um, good to me. Yeah. Um, are there any other things that you like to like incorporate into your burger or put sure. on there as a topping? Well, some thoughts I have is um, seasoning is very important. If you're starting, I know turkey is, is typically a really lean meat, that's why mm -hmm. you'll add bacon fat or something. Sure. Even olive oil, you can mix some of that in there. Careful not to mix too much because then it gets too sloppy and it falls apart. Mm -hmm. But seasoning, just any kind of seasoning you like. It could be smoked paprikas, it could be uh, something hot like crushed red pepper, something like that. And it really makes a difference. As long as you're not abusing the temperature and overcooking it, you can't go wrong. Excellent. Well, I see we've got some fresh turkey ready to go. Um, would this be a good yes. time to, to get some, some more burgers up on the grill? Absolutely. Excellent. So we're going to make some, some ground turkey burgers. And all I'm going to do is take ground turkey. And I already pre-mixed some salt, pepper, onion, garlic. All right. And then that way, all I have to do is just mix it together. It doesn't take a lot to mix, but you want to do it thoroughly. And a lot of times, if you can let it sit for a little bit and let those mm -hmm. seasonings open up and really incorporate into the meat, then it really helps. Okay. How long would you recommend before you're going to put something on the grill? When would you maybe if mix I'm, these seasonings in? Sure. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna mix the seasonings about uh, 20 minutes ahead of time, okay. Then that way I can form the the turkey patties, and then I can just let it sit in the fridge and firm up a little bit. Okay. And then let the seasonings really open up. So I would say about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that sounds good. So now all we're doing is we're just kind of making the meatball and I'm just gonna smash it. All right. <laughs> That's part of it right here. <laughs> Excellent, well thanks everybody who's sending in questions. Uh, we've got some great ones coming in. So keep them coming and yeah, thanks for watching. So then right. I, put my, I put my thumbprint in there. Yes. And as you can tell, you, you can still see the thumbprint but mm -hmm. it really keeps it from um, being a big meatball. Right. Yep, I've 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 grilled my fair share of meatballs. Sure, uh, not intentionally. Sure, it happens. <laughs> it happens. All right, so we're just gonna leave those on there. All right. And I like nice big patties, so I'm yeah. just making these good third pound turkey burgers. Nice. 
that kind of fit on the bun really nice. All right. So we've got more questions coming in here. Sure. Um, we've got a question from Ed. Ed would like to know, what are your favorite vegetables to grill, to grill and how do you season and prep them? Wow. <laughs> I like when season's in, you got asparagus. Asparagus is always fun. Sure. Um, is, and really, the best vegetables to grill are the ones that don't fall through the grate. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so it really turns into a mess after that. <laughs> so the asparagus, depending on their size, you might just kind of put them uh, perpendicular to the grill grates, but then you could just roll them around Sure. So those uh, squashes are always fun. It's really hard to, to mess that up, but they <laughs> get some nice coloration on there. Um, even corn can kind of cut the corn in big wheels. Oh, okay. And you can, you, then you can cook them sure. like that, and then you get this nice flavor from the grilled corn. Sure. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, excellent. Um, all right. Well, so we've got the fresh turkey burgers on the grill now. We do. Um, do we have some frozen ones to put on as oh, well? Oh, sure. Yes, we have these right here. Great. So then what we're going to do is that um, I've already opened them up. We're just going to put them right on there. Excellent. And these look like they're the, the Genio bacon and cheddar turkey burgers. Yes. And then these are the regular seasoned ones. All right. So, I'm having a tough time with this. Uh-oh. So how about we do this? All right, so that's why we say leave yeah, them frozen. Yeah, leave them frozen. Until it's time to put them right out on the, on the grill. <laughs> We're going to have to find another one Okay. Like that. Okay, so All right. we'll look well, for another a, one. Yeah, we've, we've got, got this a good one, one going here. here. All right, and then it looks like we've already got a couple of these Hormel Always Tender pork, pork loin fillets. fillets. That's right. Yeah. And then I did take some of that and I cut it into a kebab. Oh, yeah. So then that way... It kind of changes it up. You can have your grilled vegetables with the kebab, and here I just had the meat, mm -hmm. which is it makes a nice portion size for your plate. Rather than just a big hunk of meat, you've already got it sitting there, and it's more you just kind of pull it off the skewer. Um, so, one thing to, to notice, you see, I've got I made three skewers. <laughs> this third one didn't make it. This one didn't get soaked. I wanted to show what happens when you don't soak the wooden okay. skewers. They kind of just burn up and fall apart. Okay. So here with the skewers that were soaked, the wood lasts longer because, well, wood on fire ends up burning. <laughs> sure. So what you end up doing is you soak it and it takes more time for that wood to burn. By the time the, the uh, meat's cooked, mm -hmm. you're all set to go. Perfect. So then the other thing to always keep aware of is to make sure not to push the meat up against each other like this. Okay. Kind of creates a shield and it takes longer for the heat to penetrate and to cook. Okay. So what I do is I make sure that I separate that out a little bit. That way the heat can come straight through it and all the meat cooks at the same time. Yeah, I suppose that's... So I'm not uh, overcooking the outside waiting for the inside mm -hmm. to cook up. Okay, excellent. So these look like they were seasoned. Was that something that you seasoned? This was this was the Hormel brand, the herbed... Oh, the dry rub? Flakes. Yes, excellent. That's right. Oh yeah, those are great. So. I just cut them up and put them on a stick. Beautiful. <laughs> nice and easy. Excellent. Let's see. These guys should be pretty close to being done. All right. Again, we're looking for 155. Let's check it out. Okay. Well, almost there. You're getting in the 140s? Yep, 140s. 155. All right. So I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes. Okay. And then we should be ready to go. Great. All right. So we did have a, another question. Uh, Scott asked, uh, how do you reduce flare out? Oh, yeah. Well, is to take away the source of the flame. OK. Right? So that's why if I'm able to move things around, if it starts flaring out, I just kind of move the meat over and reduce the fuel that's flaring. If it gets too bad, then I'm just going to take a little bit of spray water Oh, okay. And, and spray it down. That'll cool it off. That'll stop the flare. Okay, great. Nice and Thank easy. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Let's see. So as you can see, these aren't sticking. We let it sear for four minutes. Perfect. And then it just releases right off of the grill grate. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. So well, those are going. We've got the turkey burgers um, and the seasoned turkey burger. Yeah. We did kebabs, mm -hmm. pork loin fillets. All right. 
Um, well, let's see. Well, we uh, we do have a treat uh, that's kind of fun. We wanted to do something different out yeah. on the grill, so we yeah. actually have a couple different pizza options oh, for yes, grilling that's today. Right. So, um, forward to that. excellent. So, so let's see. Um, the grills, we've got an original pizza, I hear, using Hormel pepperoni. That's right. Um, and then we also have a dessert pizza coming up here in That's a minute right. with some Skippy peanut butter and Justin's That's right. peanut butter cups, or That's almond right. butter cups, I'm sorry. Um, great, so um, so how do I, yeah, I've never tried this before. How do I grill a pizza? So the trick is, is to make sure you've got your grill grates clean okay. and hot. Because hmm. you'll go to a wood-fired pizza place and they're using a thousand degrees or 700 degrees. They're using a lot, but it's mm -hmm. on a stone. Here we don't have a stone. We've got a grill grate. Sure. But we want to make sure it's clean. We want to make sure it's hot. And then I'll show you the trick. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys over and let them come up. All right. So there's my ground. We're going to flip this guy. A little coaxing. There we go. Beautiful. And I'm gonna clean my grill grates. Okay. And let that warm back up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toast both sides of that pizza dough. Okay. And then top it. So okay. now it won't fall through the grates. If I just throw the pizza dough on there and then start topping it, the dough's just gonna kind of fall through the grates. And oh, sure. And make a mess. Yeah. We don't, we don't <laughs> want that. So we're gonna toast both sides. And then it won't fall through the grates. And then we're just going to close the lid to melt the toppings. Okay. Well done. Nice. Nice and Excellent. easy. So let me grab that. Okay. It's exciting. I'm going to be with my family for the fourth, so I might have to show off a little bit with my pizza on the grill this week. Well, do you have any, any big plans for the fourth for getting out on the grill oh. yourself? I think we're just going to be grilling some hot dogs and hamburgers and, <laughs> and, and a little bit of the traditional fare. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Perfect. So All we've right. got some uh, dough that we were working with. Mm -hmm. It's a little warm out here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my dough is rising quite fast, so I have to rework it a little bit. Okay. So this could turn into a comedy show pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, I'll, try to, I'll try to tamp it down a little bit. Sounds but. good. So we're just trying to spread this dough back out a little bit All right. as, I, as I have some trouble with it. But again, once I flatten it out, we'll simply throw it on the grill. I, I want to brush it with a little bit of oil. Okay. And then um, that'll help it kind of get me some nice grill marks on it. And um, kind of gives you that nice grilled bread flavor as well. Excellent. Another idea is to take some just some herb and oil and then that way you kind of have like a garlic bready kind of mm -hmm. thing to it, right? Nice. Excellent. So let me get the brush of oil. Okay, I see a lot of new people are joining us. Welcome to Thrilling Grilling Live. I'm here, I'm Chris from the Consumer Engagement Department and I'm here with Chef Chris Candulo and hey. we are in the process of grilling <laughs> some pizzas. So if you have any questions on grilling pizzas or grilling in general, feel free to write them in and we'll take a look and, and get your answers for you. I'm going to see how that works and I'm going to get another one working while that's going. I just put okay. a little bit of oil on it. All right. All right. Well, Joy just wrote in with a question <laughs> about, do I need to coat the grill with anything to help prevent sticking? So we actually, we talked about this a little bit earlier yeah. in the video. Um, we started while the grate was cool, we did a little cooking spray on there. That's right. And then let that cook off. And then um, you know, once we got things up and running, um, just using that grill brush to keep things nice and clean. Nice and clean. Excellent. Clean, and that looks like, yeah. And uh, the spray in the beginning of everything. I've not sprayed it since. Sure. And nothing is sticking because we're all set to go. Yeah. We got it nice and hot. So we've got one pizza crust here. It turned out a little larger. <laughs> so the humidity is not on my side right now. So all I did is I brushed this one with a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of olive oil, and okay. some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to flip it. As you can say, I'm just using tongs. Mm -hmm. And then I've got this going. I did use a little bit of just regular salad oil. Okay. Just to kind of help it. You can see I start to have a little bit of bubbling, which is all right. 
and these are not going to be perfect pizzeria pizzas. Sure, yeah. This is this is backyard grilling. Yeah, that's that's the fun of doing it that's, at home. That's right. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my spatula to help me flip. Beautiful. So now I've got a nice crust started. Great. And then I am going to let's see. We're going to do the special one last. Okay. Same so while this one's cooking, mm -hmm. I'm going to just throw a little bit of sauce on it. Okay. And there's going to be some cheese, some pepperoni, some peppers. Sounds great. There we go. Yeah, when I when I heard we were using Hormel pepperoni out on the grill, I was excited. Yeah. Any any opportunity to open the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do some cheese. All right. Great. And this is just going to be a nice simple, nice simple pizza. All right. Some bell peppers. And lots. There it is, that Hormel lots pepperoni. Of pepperoni. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we actually had a question from Therese. Uh, she asked if there are any grilling tips uh, for doing dessert or something sweet. So stay tuned, Therese. We've got a treat that yes. we're getting prepped for you right now. So, right after this guy. Excellent. So we had a question also from Tim. Uh, Tim wants to know, uh, what's your best marinade for pork? Oh. Well, I like to do some oil and herb with okay. some salt and pepper. Nice, nice and that's, simple. That's always been just wonderful. But you can you can do many different things. You can do, I'm going to close the lid to this guy All right. to let this melt. Um, you can do Asian flair, whether it's teriyaki's or barbecues or you name it. So seasonings, marinades, or just herbs. Okay. Great. How long do you usually marinate? Like if you were doing something like sure. like a like a Hormel, you know, always tender pork loin, would what would you do? If for I'm that? doing if I'm doing an herb and an oil, mm -hmm. I'll just rub it and just let it sit for a few minutes. Okay. Because as you're cooking it, it's still on there. Sure. Right. If I'm marinating with something a little thinner, it could be a teriyaki sauce. I might let it sit a little bit longer. Okay. Just to make sure it kind of takes in, but then I can also baste it. Oh sure. I'm like if I'm saying it's teriyaki, I want to be able to taste teriyaki. So then I'll exactly. baste it as it's cooking. Okay. Great. So I'm kind of impatient. <laughs> We're almost there. Great. Actually, we've got another question from Rick that uh, he he wanted to know what is your best recipe for a juicy Lucy. <laughs> it's a Minnesota tradition. It, it is right. <laughs> How about some jalapeno jack cheese? Excellent. Right well, in the center, though, or habanero jack cheese. Ooh. So nice and spicy. Excellent. So yeah. So if you're if you're one of our non-Minnesota natives watching now, wondering what's what a juicy that? Lucy, uh, do you mind <laughs> sure. divulging our secret? It is well, it's a hamburger patty with a large chunk of cheese and another hamburger patty that you kind of press all around so it doesn't open up, and then you grill that. Oh. And then when you open that up, it just, just hot cheese. Yes. Excellent. It's really wonderful. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. All right. Okay. So uh, we got a question from Garrett. Uh, he wondered what kind of oil that we're using out on the grill. Just a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil. Okay. That's it. Excellent. Just some olive oil. So now, wait. Doesn't quite fit on a conventional platter, <laughs> but that's okay. It makes it for a lot of fun. So oh, then beautiful. there is there is our pizza. That fresh bread smell. I'm sorry, folks, yes. that you can't smell it. Yes. So I had some cheese that dropped over, so I'm going to clean that up. Okay. And then we're going to get into our dessert pizza. Excellent. So this one just seemed like a really good idea. So since I had trouble with this pizza dough, it uh -huh. didn't quite want to lay out the way I wanted it to. This turned into my garlic bread or herb bread. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so herb and oil. Kind of do that, grill it up, and then now you can cut that table side. And now it's, it's kind of like a crazy bread, if you want to call <laughs> yeah, it that. That sounds great. So there's never mistakes, just opportunities. <laughs> I'm going to grab one more crust. Excellent. All right. So if you guys are watching right now, um, we're getting ready for our dessert pizza, the kind of the big uh, exciting reveal, something I've definitely never tried on the grill before. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. We've got some Skippy peanut butter that's going to go on there. Um, I think we've used creamy, but you know, if you're a chunky household, that's quite all right. Feel free to use that super chunk peanut butter. 
Um, and then we also have some Justin's almond butter cups. Um, we're using the dark chocolate, but uh, you can use milk chocolate. We, you know, you're, fr you're free to do any anything that you'd like to do with that chocolate. We're not gonna. I know my folks, if you're watching, I know you're not up for the dark chocolate, so just rest assured, if I try this out, I'll use milk. All right. <laughs> so again, I'm working with my dough again a little bit. It is quite warm and moist out here, so I just have to kind of reflatten it a little bit. Okay. So. This is the fun with it. You gotta, gotta work with your food. All right, sometimes. So is this a dough that you can find like in a grocery store? Absolutely. Okay. Any kind of dough works. Uh, you can find in the frozen section as pizza dough. You can make your own. It can be whole wheat, it can be white. It doesn't matter. It nice. all works. Okay. All right? Yeah. So you got to work through some of your challenges here. Okay. Got a nice, got a nice clean grate, so we're ready That's to right. go there. Beautiful. Right. So I'm gonna do a little bit of olive oil, just to kind of help it come. Sticking and smooth about that nice, nice lines on it. Okay. And then I'm just going to drape it. Over this way. All right. Again, I'm going to sear the bottom of that. And I'm going to flip it over, sear the other side, and then we'll we'll go second one. Yeah. You can feel the heat coming off of that nice yeah. hot grill before yes. you slap yeah. that down. Let's I'm going to pull these off. Okay. Before I forget to do that. Got some of those Genio ground turkey burgers and the. That's right. See the bacon and cheddar burger looks great as well. All right, so I'm gonna have a okay. nice platter here, ready to go for a dessert pizza. That's right. And the pizza comes off. And then we're gonna check the bottom. Okay. Shouldn't take too long. Oh yeah. Nice. I'm just gonna peel that off a little bit. Beautiful grill line. <laughs> Let that cook up a little bit. Great. Um, I've got a question here. Um, for using the Hormel Always Tender Pork Loin, um, once, you know, they talk a lot about, about letting something rest once you pull it off sure. of the grill. How long for something sure. like that would you let it rest before you go and slice it? You could probably look for about five, five to ten minutes. Okay. Just gives an opportunity for that moisture to kind of get back with down the meat. Okay. So, you're, if you're cooking, you got a lot of high heat, it's driving that moisture inside. Once you let it rest a little bit, it kind of just relaxes. Okay, great. Yeah. So this is Skippy peanut butter with marshmallow fluff. Oh, beautiful. And all I'm going to do is instead of pizza sauce, this is going to be my pizza sauce. Nice. And I purposely didn't mix it perfectly. I wanted to, I like to see the marbling. Yeah, that's really in that. Smells great, it looks great. <laughs> I've got a good feeling about what it's gonna taste like when oh, we're yeah. done. Oh yeah, this is not gonna be bad. I like a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is not gonna be a very clean eating piece. Sure. You might, you might need a fork and a knife. That's all right. By the time you get to the end of the meal, right? you know, might as well go ahead and just go for it. Get messy, it's all right. And then here, we're just gonna stick the almond butter Dark chocolate. Excellent. Cups on there. I'm just going to close this to it all. Nice, nice and melty. melty. That's, oh. right. <laughs> That's right. Beautiful. All right, let's check in with our folks watching live right now. All right. Should probably leave it melt a little bit longer. Okay, sounds I'd good. Like to see it kind of just disintegrate. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, this weekend when I was grilling, I put some cheese on my burgers. Uh, yeah, sure. I just had some, yeah, that didn't have cheese already built in. So, um, you know, how long, you know, should they get to that high temperature when I put the cheese on, or when should I do that? Sure. Get them to 165 on okay. your turkey burgers, and then just put the cheese on it. It only takes 5, 10 seconds, and you're done. Oh, okay. Excellent. So, there's no guesswork. There's no, well, I'm going <laughs> to make sure. That just 165, cheese done. Beautiful. Nice and easy. Yep. I've, yep, I probably leave it on too long, and I've got some nice cheese drippings to clean up off the grates at the end of my that, grilling. That does happen. <laughs> that does happen. But you just kind of scrape it off. Sure. Okay. Ready to so go. these are just about ready. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, well, if you're just tuning in, this is our dessert pizza on the grill using Skippy peanut butter, 
some marshmallow fluff and some Justin's almond butter cups. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is going to get fast. <laughs> Sorry, I missed. It's just a lot of fun. It's different, you know. It doesn't always have to be meat and vegetables. It could be breads, it could be pizzas, it could be dessert. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, yes, Chef Chris. Uh, I appreciate it. This is exciting. I'm I'm inspired for what I can <laughs> yep, do do this coming week here sure. for the Fourth of July. And, sure. um, great. And thank you, everyone, who's been watching Thanks. Thrilling Thanks. Grilling Live. Uh, we're here with Chef Chris Candulo, and uh, my name is Chris as well. And we thank you all so much for watching. Great.